What if tomorrow you woke up to the news of a war between Israel and Iran? A chilling thought, isn't it? The Middle East, a cauldron of political, religious, and cultural complexities, has been the birthplace of countless conflicts, and one of the most enduring, volatile, and potentially explosive of these is the tension between Israel and Iran. These two nations, located at the crossroads of Asia, Africa, and Europe, have been at odds for decades, but why? The origins of this conflict can be traced back to the mid-20th century when the State of Israel was established. This event, celebrated by some, was seen as a threat by others, particularly Iran. From here, the relationship between these two nations has been marked by a complex web of political maneuvering, ideological differences, and deep-seated mistrust. The reasons behind the Israel-Iran conflict are manifold. Ideological differences, religious tensions, and geopolitical considerations all play their part. Iran, a predominantly Shiite Muslim nation, views Israel, a Jewish state, with deep suspicion. On the other hand, Israel sees Iran's growing influence in the region as a significant threat to its security. A war between these two nations would have far-reaching implications. It would not only destabilize an already tumultuous region, but could also potentially draw in other global powers, escalating the conflict to a scale unimaginable. However, despite the historical tensions and present-day provocations, a full-blown war between Israel and Iran has yet to materialize. The reasons for this are as complex as the conflict itself. Some cite the delicate balance of power in the region, others point to international diplomatic efforts, while some believe it's the fear of mutual destruction that has so far kept these two nations from plunging into an all-out war. The question remains, is a war between Israel and Iran inevitable? Or can it be avoided? At this juncture, only time will tell. But one thing is certain, the world watches on with bated breath, hoping for a peaceful resolution to this long-standing conflict. To understand the present, we must delve into the past. The story of Israel and Iran is a tale of shifting sands, of alliances turned sour, of trust betrayed. Once upon a time, believe it or not, these two countries were close allies. Their bond, formed in the crucible of common interests and mutual enemies, seemed unbreakable. But as we all know, nothing lasts forever. The first cracks appeared with the Islamic Revolution in Iran in the late 1970s. Until then, Iran was under the rule of the Shah, a secular and Western-leaning leader. Israel and Iran, both non-Arab states in a predominantly Arab region, found common ground in their shared strategic interests. However, the Islamic Revolution brought about a seismic change. The Shah was overthrown and Iran became an Islamic Republic. This shift in power marked the start of a new era. Iran's new leaders viewed Israel as a Zionist entity and an extension of Western imperialism. The alliance that had once seemed so solid began to crumble. Then came the Iran-Iraq War in the 1980s, which further strained relations. Iran found itself isolated, fighting a brutal war against Iraq, a country backed by many Western powers, including the United States. Israel, already viewed with suspicion, was lumped together with these Western imperialists. The war ended, but the bitterness remained. Iran's leaders continued to view Israel with hostility, while Israel grew increasingly concerned about Iran's nuclear ambitions and its support for militant groups in the region. And so, the close allies of yesteryears became the bitter enemies of today. The bond that once united them was replaced by a wall of mistrust and animosity. It's a stark reminder of how quickly alliances can shift, how easily friends can become foes. These historical events have left deep scars influencing the relations between the two countries to this day. Nuclear power, a force for good or a tool for destruction. As we venture into the third scene, let's take a deep dive into Iran's nuclear program and its impact on Israel-Iran relations. Iran's nuclear program is a point of contention that has been under the international spotlight for decades. It's a complex issue that has roots in Iran's pursuit of nuclear technology, initially for energy purposes back in the 1950s. Over the years, however, concerns have arisen about the potential for this program to be used to develop nuclear weapons, a prospect that has been met with widespread international opposition and concern. This concern is particularly potent for Israel. Given the fraught history between the two nations, the possibility of a nuclear-armed Iran is a scenario Israel has consistently expressed grave concerns about. The fear is that once Iran achieves nuclear capabilities, the balance of power in the region could shift dramatically and not in Israel's favor, 
And then there's the role of the United States and other major powers. The U.S. in particular has been a vocal critic of Iran's nuclear ambitions. Over the years, it has spearheaded international efforts to curtail Iran's nuclear program through a combination of sanctions, diplomatic negotiations, and even cyber attacks. Other major powers, including the UK, France, Germany, Russia, and China, have also played significant roles in these efforts, although their approaches and viewpoints have varied. Despite these efforts, Iran's nuclear program has proven to be resilient. The country has weathered sanctions, isolation, and even threats of military action. Its commitment to its nuclear program has remained steadfast, and this has only served to heighten tensions with Israel and the international community. And so we find ourselves in a state of uneasy stalemate. On one hand, Iran is determined to continue its nuclear program. On the other, Israel and the international community are equally determined to prevent Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons. It's a high-stakes game of chess, with the world watching every move. The nuclear issue continues to be a major bone of contention, adding fuel to the fire. As we move forward, the question remains, how will this nuclear standoff play out? And what will it mean for Israel, Iran, and the world at large? Fast forward to the present day. In the grand chessboard of Middle Eastern politics, Israel and Iran stand as formidable opponents, both armed with strategic prowess and a deep-seated distrust of each other. Recent events have only served to fan the flames of this long-standing conflict. A series of incidents, from airstrikes to cyber attacks, have marked a new chapter in this enduring rivalry. Both nations, while publicly advocating for peace, have shown a willingness to engage in covert operations and indirect confrontations. It's a dangerous game of cat and mouse where every move is calculated, every action a response to an unseen provocation. But it's not just these two nations locked in this dance. The regional players, too, have a significant role in shaping the trajectory of this conflict. Saudi Arabia, with its Sunni majority, views Iran's Shia regime with suspicion, aligning more closely with Israel. On the other hand, the likes of Syria and Lebanon, influenced heavily by Iran, often find themselves on the opposing side of the Israeli front. Then there's the United States, a player not by virtue of geography, but of influence. Its relationship with Israel is a complex one, steeped in decades of mutual interests and strategic alliances. The U.S. role in the Iran-Israel standoff is a delicate balancing act, one that requires careful navigation to avoid triggering a full-scale conflict. Russia, too, cannot be overlooked. With a vested interest in the stability of the region, it maintains a cautious neutrality, often stepping in to mediate when tensions threaten to boil over. This is the tangled web of the current scenario. Amidst this intricate geopolitical ballet, Israel and Iran continue to maneuver, each vying for dominance, each wary of the other's intentions. It's a high-stakes game where the smallest misstep can tip the balance and ignite a conflict that could engulf the region. The situation is volatile, with every development adding a new layer of complexity. Is there a path to peace, or are we on the brink of war? This question hangs like a cloud over the tensions between Israel and Iran. And the answer, as always, is complex. When we speak of peace, we must understand that it involves a multifaceted approach, much like a jigsaw puzzle. One piece of this puzzle is diplomacy. Diplomacy is the art of navigating the treacherous waters of international relations, of smoothing over ruffled feathers and finding common ground. It's the first line of defense in preventing conflicts, and it's crucial in this scenario. Diplomatic channels between Israel and Iran, while strained, could be revitalized through intermediaries, creating a dialogue that may pave the way for peace. But diplomacy alone isn't enough. International pressure plays a vital role, too. The global community, through organizations like the United Nations, can exert pressure on both nations to find nonviolent solutions. This pressure, combined with diplomacy, can create an environment conducive to peaceful negotiations. Then comes the element of compromise. The nuclear question is a thorny issue, but not insurmountable. Both nations have their concerns and fears. Acknowledging these fears and finding a middle path can be a significant step toward peace. However, we must not ignore the potential consequences of war. A conflict between Israel and Iran could have ripple effects throughout the Middle East, destabilizing the region and potentially sparking a larger conflict. The cost, in terms of human lives and international relations, would be catastrophic. As we've seen, 
The path to peace is not a straight line. It's a winding road filled with obstacles, but it's a journey worth taking. Because the alternative, a descent into war, is a path that no one should ever have to tread. The choices made today will shape the future of not just Israel and Iran, but the entire Middle East. Let's hope that the choices made are ones of diplomacy, compromise, and peace.